Happy holidays to one and all, and welcome to the Mind's Eye Podcast. This is Christmas week. And so we're going to have our holiday specials here on the podcast. And uh, just so folks know, there's going to be the podcast today on Monday, and then the uh, Christmas Eve message on Wednesday, and uh, then the show will be on break until uh, the new year. At least that's the plan, and uh, you know, sometimes I just run across something or the mood strikes me and I gotta hook up the mic and uh, record my thoughts and send them all out for you to uh, listen to. But uh, that's the idea for now. Two podcasts this week and then on break until probably uh, around January 2nd. But today, I, I entitled today's show, Happy Christmas, The War Is Over. And, you know, I think this is an important message for all of us to hear this time of year. We've really lost, I think, not everybody, but quite a few people have really lost what the meaning of Christmas is all about. I mean, we have uh, religious folks now who claim that all holidays are evil and pagan and from the devil. And, you know, I know people of that mindset who their family begs them every year just to sit down and have Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner with them, and they absolutely uh, refuse. They leave the house, they, you know, wherever it is they go. And, you know, I, I think it's sad that this is happening, you know, and this, this is a mindset that's grown so much, uh, you know, in the United States and, and even across the world, you know, and not to, do, to mention all of the division, you know, political division we're having right now. And this is not going to be a political show, I, I promise. But, um, you know, I think we've really lost sight about what this time of year means, what it represents, what we're supposed to carry out through the rest of the year from Christmas time. There have been so many songs written over the years about the feeling and the magic of Christmas time and the love and the goodwill that everyone shows to one another. And uh, many, sh uh, many songs that have been written over the decades have asked the question, how do we make this last all year? You know, how can we have this magical feeling, this feeling of goodwill and love toward one another all the year long? And that's a really good question. Because when you think about it, why should we have one day or one season uh, maybe a month or so every year where we feel that we want to give to others, that we want to help the poor, that we want to be kind to one another. Why is it just a season? And then when January 2nd hits, uh, we usually say and have said over the years, well, it's back to normal. We go to work, we get into the same old routine. Some of us start to get a little bit sour, you know, toward life, our position in it, the people around us. So, you know, how can we really, uh, as one song by the Trans-Siberian Orchestra asks, how can we make this Christmas thing last? And uh, we're going to take a little bit of a metaphysical approach to this today, and I, I think it's going to be interesting. But I think uh, first and foremost, to start this show out, I want to uh, make something clear to some folks uh, who listen. You know, last uh, Friday, I believe it was when I did the, uh, the podcast on the rigged election, uh, there were some people that were not happy with that. You know, there were words exchanged and, you know, name calling and all of this sort of thing. 
And, you know, I have to admit, you know, I'm a human being, and when the bullying and the name-calling name starts, uh, you know, I'll sometimes say something back. I try not to be mean. I try to put things in a more uh, logical context to say, hey, you know, are, uh, are you really thinking about all of the facts? But, you know, some people get angry. They think you're putting them down. They think, you know... Uh, you know, some people have called me a liberal. I'm pushing the liberal agenda. You know, I hate Donald Trump and I hate his supporters. And, you know, that's not true. Let me let me say something in the spirit of Christmas right now. I know there are people that listen to this show, people that have emailed me, people that have commented on my videos uh, on YouTube and, uh, you know, the video platforms who are avid Trump supporters, and they are wonderful people. But what is the difference? Because I don't, I don't care who anybody supports politically. I may not agree with Donald Trump, some of his policies and his attitude and the way he conducts himself. You know, I think there's a lot there that needs to be changed uh, in the light of having uh, I think a little more uh, respect and brotherly love toward others, you know, but that's neither here nor there. Some people don't see that, and I'm fine with that. The thing that I talk about in my shows, and I want folks to understand, is, you know, the the violence, the gun touting, the people, you know, threatening uh, you know, minorities and the white supremacy and the civil war, that kind of, you know, behavior is what I'm against and the kind of dialogue that seems to inflame that uh, from certain political leaders in some people. But, you know, I don't care who anyone uh, voted for or supports, um, I am certainly not uh, a liberal. I mean, I have family members and friends uh, who are, and they're very hopeful about the Biden administration, and I keep telling them, uh, you know, I think this is going to be a crap storm of a different kind, you know, coming down the pike. And they all say, oh, you know, don't <laughs> don't dash my hopes. But, uh, you know, it's politics. Who Who do you trust? That's why I always say trust God. And that's all I'm going to say about that in, in the spirit of Christmas. Uh, I'm not against Trump supporters. I'm not even against Donald Trump. Uh, have there been times I've heard him say things that, have, you know, I'm a human being and it made me angry. And I'm saying, you know, what the heck is this guy saying? But by and large, you know, for the most part, he's a human being. You know, and what is in his heart and what is in his mind is something he will give an account for just like the rest of us. I would like to see his life change and heal and become better. I think he had some, you know, really good ideas. I think making America great again in concept uh, was a really awesome thing. Uh, but I think the approach... Um, a lot got lost in translation, you know, so, you know, I, I wish him no harm. I, I'd like to see him, um, become more in touch, you know, with, with the spirit of God that's in all of us. I wish him and his followers no harm. I don't frown upon them. I just wish some of the people who claim to be Christians and claim, uh, to be religious, uh, who support Donald Trump, yet they're ready to do all of these horrible things to other people and fight and riot and, you know, want to start civil wars. I heard one guy on YouTube commented that, uh, you know, they don't have to start a civil war, just block the major roads and highways into towns and starve the people out, let no food supply in. There's already a shortage, you know, it will weaken the opposition, weaken the enemy. You know, uh, I don't think that kind of thing would fly uh, uh, very far um, before, you know, there would be police and National Guard and 
private citizens uh, as well, uh, you know, marching in droves to uh, clean that mess up. But, you know, these are, these are the awful thoughts that people think. And that's the kind of thing that I'm saying we need to lay down, you know, and that's the part of this uh, podcast, you know, happy Christmas, the war is over, the war needs to be over. You know, we're all Americans in this country. We're all brothers and sisters. We're brothers and sisters across the world, whether it's China, whether it's Russia, whether it's the UK. And one thing that I've learned over the years is that often a nation judges another based on its leaders. If the leaders are tyrants, if the leaders are ignorant, uh, for some reason people automatically think that the people are the same way, but that's not necessarily true. So, you know, we need to love and respect one another. And, uh, you know, we need to lay down the arms. We need to uh, work together. We need to find the way to, you know, bring that spirit of Christmas and what, what it represents back into our lives and let it follow us throughout the year. And that's mainly what we're talking about today. How do we do that? And, you know, metaphysically uh, and spiritually, I would say, we feel this magic this time of year because it's, it's filled with symbols. The lights, the Christmas tree, the star, which represents the uh, the star of Bethlehem, that's on you know every treetop, the manger, you know the uh, the angels, you know there's there's all of these symbols everywhere, and and man is a very uh, symbolic being, you know he he sees symbols in everything, and those symbols will either make him feel uncomfortable or hostile or, uh, you know, whatever the case may be, uh, in danger or, you know, symbols have the power to make man feel peaceful and calm. And this is one of the reasons actually that, uh, the Catholic church and the Orthodox church, uh, have icons And the statues, they don't worship them, they don't set them up as idols, but they say they have them as symbols of their faith, so that those uh, who have them in their home can constantly be reminded of the Christian walk and how we are to live. And Christmas is very much filled with, uh, you know, symbols for a lot of people, And, uh, you know, the colors, the lights, you know, the warm glow of the Christmas lights and candles, I think it, you know, brings out of us this feeling that we feel closer to God, closer to Christ at Christmas time. But unfortunately, you know, I I think psychologically we attach a lot of that warm feeling to the lights and to the symbols and to the tree and, you know, the Christmas music that's singing about the birth of Christ and silent night, oh, holy night, angels we have heard on high. You know, we attach a lot of feeling to that, that, you know, it it opens our minds, it opens our hearts. I think at Christmas time, all of those symbols really help us to see and feel the presence of God more real and more present in our lives. And that's the magic. That's that warm feeling that you just can't describe. But when we take all of the symbols down, we pack them up, we put them in the basement, we put them in the closet, we put them in the attic, You know, I think the reminders of uh, those symbols of God, of spirit, of warmth and love and goodwill get boxed away with it. 
But see, I don't think, oh, I, I know, you know, as, as a, a fact, the power isn't in the symbols. The symbols bring all of those feelings and all of the attributes out of us, but those feelings and those attributes are within us. We are the living being. We are the one who has a soul. We are the ones who are filled with the Spirit of God. Not the lights, not the tree, not the Christmas angels and the mangers. Those are just inanimate objects. They're, they're pretty decorations. And they invoke a certain feeling in us. But, but those feelings come from us. Our heart, our mind, our soul. And I think once we realize that and just kind of get that glimpse of truth that, hey, this thing called Christmas, this wonderful feeling I have that particular time of year, it's not in the season, it's not in the stuff, it's not in the decorations, it's in me, then I can bring those things out of the closet, out of the basement, out of the attic of my own mind and my own soul all year long. You know, there's a, a song I hear, heard years ago, I don't remember who sang it, it said, if you have uh, Jesus living in your heart, then you'll have Christmas every day. Because what is Christmas? It is, you know, Christ Mass or a celebration of Christ. And that is something, whatever our denomination is, or whether we're just, you know, uh, believers who who don't have uh, any church affiliation at all. You know, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to celebrate Christ and let Christ shine through us every day. Not just at Christmas time, not just at Thanksgiving time, not just at Easter time, but all the time. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's what the scriptures say. So God isn't just magical and wonderful and goodwill and giving to others at Christmas time. He's that way all the time. See, I believe that what we experience at Christmas time is the very presence of God, not closer to us, because God is always close to us, but there's something in us that starts to open our spiritual eyes just a little more, and we see it, and we feel it, and we know it, but it's always there. You know, it doesn't disappear or evaporate like a fog or a mist, you know, after the Christmas season. It's still there. We, for whatever reason, just don't always see it or tune into it the way that we should. And I think that's the challenge for each and every one of us when we hit January 2nd and 3rd and 4th and then February March, April, into the summer months, or winter, if you live in Australia. Um, you know, I think that's the challenge, is to carry this spark of the Christmas spirit with us. The Christ Mass spirit. The celebration of the Christ. The Christ within And I think we also have to start realizing, like I said after, uh, or in the beginning of this podcast, uh, talking about laying down our arms, you know, the war is over, let's get rid of all this nasty behavior that we're having toward one another. You know, what did the angel say on that first, you know, Christmas morning? Did they not announce there would be peace on earth and goodwill toward men. They didn't say that would be, 
you know, that uh, we should be fighting and killing one another or looking to fight or kill those who don't believe as we believe. Yes, there's some people that really exaggerate, you know, that those um, verses in the Bible when Jesus said, you know, he brings a sword to the earth or, you know, a fire, you know, but that's not talking about a war. And now I've seen some of the uh, the people uh, on the internet try to turn it into that. You know, like, hey, Christ isn't talking about peace. He brought a sword. No, that sword and that fire and that division, you know, a man's enemies will be those of his, uh, his own household, is talking about those who believe being hated and persecuted and ridiculed by those who don't believe, and they may, they may be members of our own family, and that sometimes sadly does happen. And sometimes, yes, the those who don't believe may even try to kill those who believe for one reason or another. That's happened at the hands of man too. But Christ is not telling us to kill anyone. Kill those of a different denomination. Kill those of a different uh, skin color. Kill those of a different political affiliation. Jesus didn't care about any of those things. As far as we are concerned, children of God are concerned, it's peace on earth, goodwill toward men. To love our neighbor as we love ourselves. That is the spirit of Christmas. And that's not saying that if our life isn't threatened in some way that we shouldn't defend our lives or if we're in America and, you know, our democracy and our freedom uh, starts being taken away and somebody tries to, you know, turn us into, uh, uh, you know, uh, something like a communist China or, you know, whatever the case may be, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't, you know, Republican and Democrat and Independent. Christian and non-Christian, if, if you're a patriot, if you value freedom and you don't want oppression, yes, you should bind together and try to thwart that. But violence, you know, actually uh, going to war, you know, fighting, that would be, uh, in my understanding, the very last thing that the child of God, the believer, should engage in last ditch effort have no choice what a lot of people are doing right now what a lot of people are saying right now this is not in the spirit of christ this is not in the spirit of christmas we need to get that back you know i think we all need to sit down and watch you know it's a wonderful life <laughs> with uh you know jimmy stewart or you know the holiday inn with uh you know bing crosby you know, there's a, there's a couple of good, uh, you know, my wife and I, we like to watch the, the kind of cheesy, low-budget uh, Christmas uh, movies this time of year. And, and, of course, some of the classics. And there's one called Saint Street, you know, which is cheesy to the cheesiest you can get. But the message is awesome. You know, how we should act toward one another. How Jesus is always, you know, closer than a brother. He's always right there with us, whether we see him or not. You know, so this Christmas season, uh, you know, uh, I think it's on Amazon Prime for free as well right now. But uh, if you have a chance, uh, just, and I don't know any of the actors, I don't know who they are. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't name them, but Saint Street, you know, that's a nice little movie to watch. And, uh, you know, I think people this time of year, we, we need to sit down and watch some of these little inspirational movies, the classics, and maybe some of the new ones, and say, this is a creative rendition of what following Christ is supposed to be like, what Christmas is supposed to be all about, what Christmas is supposed to inspire in us to take throughout the year. How is our lives touching other lives? How are we touching others when Christ touches us? 
and inspiring people, you know, through Christ isn't trying to scare people with apocalypse and doom and all of that. Sure, you know, all of that stuff is inevitably uh, coming, you know, because, you know, the the world uh, will collapse in upon itself, you know, at least those who, who stick to that broad path of destruction, you know, but we don't have to be a part of that. Again, we can come out from among them and touch not the unclean thing. You know, I think we all need to get back to what Christmas is all about. And I think we've really lost that through a lot of religion that taught us fear and taught us violence and taught us division and taught us to judge others who are not like us. You know, and that even came down to denominations. Oh, you're not a Catholic. You're not a Christian. Oh, you're not, uh, you know, word of faith. You're not a Christian. Oh, you're not a Methodist. You're not a Christian. You're not a Baptist. Oh, you're a heretic. You know, we've had all of this division and fear tactics sown within our minds and in our hearts over so many years through a lot of organized religion that now even the people that have broken away from that organized religion and said, I don't agree with that stuff. I don't want to be pounded with fear anymore. I don't, I'm tired of the division. I'm tired of, you know, all of that. But now as they break away and they find new groups, you know, and, and, and new communities, new denominations, if you will, that are forming, they're starting to take those old problems with them of hatred and division and fear and scare people into believing in God and forcing their idea of God onto other people. And that's not the spirit of Christ. That's not the spirit of Christmas. You know, so maybe we ought to do some uh, meditating and contemplating this Christmas week and watch some of those classics. Sit down and watch a Christmas carol. You know, I mean, there's there's wisdom in some of the, uh, you know, writings of these old books and old movies and even some of the newer ones, you know, that people have an inspiration from God and they put it out there and, uh, you know, novels and short stories and testimonies and you know, movies and little low-budget movies, but the message is there and the message is good. And we can use those things as a springboard to get back to the basics of who we're supposed to be and what Christmas is supposed to represent. And I also want to leave uh, a little message in this podcast for uh, those of you who may feel depressed this time of year. You know, there's a lot of people that say, ah, you know, I hate Christmas. I don't like the holiday time. It's depressing. It's too commercial. You know, it, it's, it's not nice to me. And I think, again, that's because, you know, the eyes of our understanding, the eyes of our perception are focused on the wrong thing. You know, we're, we're looking at tragedy and loss and flawed human behaviors and it's commercialism and, you know, all of that sort of thing. When really it's just a day to remember the birth of Christ. The birth of Christ as a baby in the manger. The birth of Christ as the spirit of Christ indwelling us. You know, in metaphysics, there's that symbol of, you know, that star of Bethlehem representing, you know, the light of God shining down upon us, filling us with his spirit, with his light, with his mind, with his thoughts, with his peace, with his love. And Christ is then born in the manger, in the stable of our own humble hearts and souls and he grows and he matures and he leads us in the way of truth 
and life. And Christ the healer heals us on that journey. And even though we may have tribulation in this world, we know that he has overcome the world. And he will overcome the world through us, no matter what we face. Christ always raises us above the clamor of darkness and evil. Delivers us from sin, sickness, and death. And that is what we need to focus on. Not the loss, not the tragedy, not not the idea that, well, maybe we don't have any money this year and, you know, it's depressing because, you know, we can't even afford a Christmas tree or Christmas presents or Christmas dinner. You know, those things are wonderful if we can afford them. And for those of us who can, I mean, you know, we're, we're greatly blessed in this time we live in right now. But even if we can't, we have the greatest gift of all, and that is the presence of God, the Spirit of Christ. And when we have that, who knows what tomorrow will bring? Who knows what great blessings will come into our lives before Christmas 2021? In Christian metaphysics, you know, it is said uh, reality is where we put our perception. Just like quantum mechanics, what you perceive is what manifests on the screen of the universe, the screen of your life. And it is fallible, mortal human mind that looks at the world around us and says, look at all this terrible stuff, look at all of this darkness, look at all this loss, look at all of these bad things. I'm a victim. You know, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm afraid I'm going to die. I'm afraid I'm going to lose everything. You know, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. But in Christian metaphysics, you know, we say we bypass the carnal, mortal human mind and consciousness and see things through the eyes of God. Because all things God created are, are perfect and good and created from his love and his goodness. See, the evil and the darkness comes in through man and our perceptions and our actions, never through the perceptions and actions of God. So, seeing things through the eyes of God, seeing things through the eyes of faith, with God consciousness, is seeing that divine perfection that is everywhere always around us, always within us, always filling the universe and everything in it. And just like the Christmas spirit, it's always there. But are we turning our attention to notice it, to tune into it, to agree with it, to walk in it, to receive it by faith in love, with gratitude and joy? Does not the Bible say, choose ye this day whom you will serve? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There's always a choice to make. There's always the darkness of man, man's actions, and man's mortal, carnal human mind. And then there's the choice of God consciousness, infinite mind, that is everywhere present. Always loving, always blessing, never forsaking us, never leaving us. And again, just like that spirit and magic of Christmas, it's always there. But are we tuning into it? Are we looking? Or do we just choose to store it in the closet or the basement of our lives? pull it out once a year or pull it out every once in a while when things are going good. But then for the most part, we pack it away and just live according to our own fear and the way 
mortal, carnal man says things should be done and how a life should be. I say tune into God, tune into Christ, which is the way, the truth, and the life. And that is how we make this Christmas thing last. This is how we carry it throughout the year. And this is how we start to love and care for and bless one another in this country and in this world. I thank you so much for listening today. I hope you enjoyed this message. Until Wednesday, stay safe, stay well. Have a happy and blessed holiday season. And keep your eyes on the infinite. This is what I, I think a lot of people don't understand rising in consciousness. Rising or raising our Christ consciousness. It's choosing to focus and see and meditate and concentrate and contemplate the things that are higher rather than the things that are low and of the earth. Happy holidays, everyone. I'll see you on Wednesday. Have a blessed week. And I'll talk to you next time here on the Mind's Eye Podcast.